Hello, all right. Welcome to the Programmable Logic in Practice uh, video edition. So I'm going to show you some extra stuff here. Um, so this video is going to take you through different ways of instantiating the debug cores. And this is using the ISE tool. So I have the example project you can download. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is check out the project is running on the LX9 microboard. So that's this board right here. Um, and there's the two USB connections, so the serial port at the top here, and then the JTAG at the bottom. So what the code does is it simply looks for um, one of ASCII 1, ASCII 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 to toggle each of the LEDs. It also echoes back any received data by just adding one to it, um, which will give you, you know, if you send an A, it gives you a B, basically, in ASCII. So, give you an example here. Pull up the, um, the serial terminal, and I'll connect to it. So it's on COM6 at 9600 baud. So, for example, if I send A, you can see it echoes with a B here. Um, so I sent A, it comes back with B. If I send C, D. So all it's doing is adding 1 to the ASCII value. If I send 1, you can see it's toggling the lights. 2, 3, 4. Um, so I can send that all in a big chain, just toggle one and two. You see that zero B, that's because it's sending new lines, which the uh, board shifting, which are hex A, it's changing to hex B. All right, so that's the basic design. So it's just sort of testing the, um, the LEDs. So we can actually make them blink a bit by sending the long strings of one and zero. So you can't really see that in the video though. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is use the sort of automatic tools here. Um, so if I add a chip scope definition on connection file, and I just call it something like chip scope auto, give it any file name and I'll add it to the project here. And then it'll create the file, which will take a second and add it to the project. So once that's done, um, you can open, open that and after a minute, it opens this inserter core. So this is going to ask us um, some questions about the design. So the boundary scan chain, user one is fine. You only care if you're going to be using some other features. So the first thing it asks us is how many ports we want. Um, you can choose, you can do something like just have one port that's, you know, really wide, 32 bits wide, and connect everything to that. I'm going to have four ports, um, and I'm going to add just a few signals to each port. So this will make it a little easier when I set up the triggering. Um, so in this case, let's say I just want, actually I only need three ports at this point, um, 992. So then it asks you what you want to connect the ports to. Um, and we'll go ahead, set the next. So the data depth here, I'm only gonna use 1,024 samples. Um, you may want more if you're debugging more interesting designs. And the data same as trigger is OK. So next. Um, so here's the interesting thing. We actually want to set up the connection. So you hit the modify connections, and it pops up this window. Um, so the first thing you'll do is try to connect up the clock. So for example, we have this clock signal here. So we'll scroll down to the clock 100 megahertz and hit make connection. You go over to the trigger data signals connection tab here, and we have test point 012. Um, so the first thing, we have nine bits here, and I'm going to use eight of them for the RX data, and one bit's going to be the RX ready. So I'll find RX data, and I just use shift to select multiple, and hit make connection. Um, I then have this last one, and this is going to be the RX ready. So to help you find it, you can actually use this search bar up here, um, and there we see the data ready, make connections. All right, so that's the first test port. The next test port I want to be the TX data. Um, so we go through, and there's a bit of a problem. We can't, we don't actually have the TX. What's happened is it's been um, optimized away. So we have TX shift, but that's, if you look in the code, this isn't exactly the transmitted data. Um, so at this point, we're just gonna cancel and we're gonna go back to the project. So what you wanna do is on, on the synthesize options, there's this keep hierarchy and you want to set that to soft. What this is going to do is actually avoid some of these cross module optimizations um, until, and it, it'll sort of keep this intermediate file where it keeps the hierarchy, but then it throws it away after for more optimum design. You can actually set this to yes, which will give you a really fast implementation phase 
but the design won't be optimized as heavily, so it may run slower. Um, soft is sort of an in-between there that doesn't result in the slower final design, but does keep the hierarchy. So if I ran synthesize again, and then run this, I'll get the uh, those options. But in the meantime, I'm actually gonna make some changes to the source code, so I wanna add some other features to the debugger. I wanna add a counter. Oh, so that synthesis is done. So I'll show you this before I modify the code. Again, open the inserter, and I'll just go along here. I just wanna show you what the the connections look like. So this modify connections window, now what you notice is actually I have several modules. So I have the async receiver, the async transmitter module. So it didn't, it kept those modules here. And when I go back, for example, to the main module, all of a sudden you see, hey, I have these TX data. So you should always set the, um, the keep hierarchy to soft for your debug so that you still have the net names you expect. Otherwise it's easy to get confused. All right, so we throw that away. Um, I'm gonna add a counter. 24-bit counter, and this is used in the debug core to deal with the fact that the um, the the chip scope tools won't actually tell you what clock cycle things occurred on. So I'm going to use this in um, for the final debug. So I'll just quickly add a counter here. So there we go, so we have a 24-bit counter we've added. Um, and that should be good enough. So I'm now gonna go back and run this. And what I'm gonna set up is I'm going to set up a um, eight bits for the received data, eight bits for the transmitted data, 24 bits for that counter, one bit each for the flags of data is ready and data is being transmitted and one bit or two bits, sorry, for the actual data line. So we go along here um, and we have four trigger ports now. So trigger zero, trigger one, trigger two. So this is gonna be the counter, it's 24 bits wide and this will be the physical lines, the two bit wide ones. So we keep that all the same and now we can hit this. So again, because we have the keep as soft, we're going to see all the expected um, signals. So the first thing I'll do is the clock again, and then the trigger data signals. Um, I want this first one to be the receive data. So I'll say, okay, receive data here. Um, and we'll just make connections. Uh, so you notice it actually did this backwards. Um, you can either unconnect them if you want and reconnect them, it seems, one at a time, or if I flip the net names around, um, this will make sure that we have the expected order here. So zero is zero, one is one, and this channel eight is data ready. There we go. All right, so now we wanted the second um, port to be the TX data, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, make connections. And we also want the this to be TX data go. Um, so we'll look into this module, TXD start. So you can see you sort of have to look around in the different modules. Um, you can use this search feature here. This is a pretty quick way to do it actually. I haven't been showing you that yet. Um, so here we wanna add the counter. So we'll look, did it optimize it away? Um, so in this case, it actually has optimized it away. So this is showing you that it doesn't seem to let us uh, use the counter here. And I may I may have to rerun it. I can't remember now if I ran it or not, but in the meantime, I'm gonna add the, um, the actual data to this uh, final trigger port. So I'm gonna select say TXD, maybe we'll get it from here as channel zero and RXD as channel one. There we go. Okay. Um, so we just save that because we still, we're gonna check that it, uh, no, it ran synthesis. So it seems to have optimized away um, this counter variable, unfortunately. But at this point, we can just go through and hit generate uh, programming file. So I'll show you with manual in 
instantiation, how we can keep that counter variable there. So once you hit generate programming file at the console, um, it's going to basically go through, generate all of the chip scope cores, add them to your design, and give you a final bit stream. Uh, in the second part of this, I'll show you how you can actually use chip scope to check those designs um, to connect to them. So this takes a while, uh, so I won't sort of show you all the full details of it running. So again, it's generating the cores using core generator. If you do this manually, you have to yourself generate these cores, um, which will be in the second part here. So let's stop this and I'll go ahead and show you the manual instantiation. All right, so if you wanted to do this manually, so I'm just removing that. Um, what would you do? So we have to first add the sources. So I'm going to go core gen the controller. So we have to add a controller core. And we'll select icon as the core type. So this is under the debug and verification, debug, and then icon. And it takes a minute. So, oops and it'll pop up this window. So how many control ports? We're gonna select two because we're actually going to connect a virtual IO core in this example as well. And then once that's done, um, or in the meantime, we're gonna generate a new core and this will be core gen, so the integrated logic analyzer, which we'll add to project and we'll have the integrated logic analyzer. Um, we'll have to wait to core gen is done in the background here. However, I'll just hit next and rerun it. So we'll wait till core gen's done, and then we'll just have to uh, we'll have to manually run it. So we wait till this is done. There we go, there's Corrigin icon. So I thought it would keep it in the project, but it didn't. And again, you just wait for the Corrigin to pop up. Um, so in the meantime, I'll show you. So this Corrigin icon, if you do view the instantiation template, um, you can see, oops. So here it's switched to, uh, for some reason it's using a VHDL instantiation template. But you can see basically there's two 36-bit um, bit registers you need. So we're going to add those. I'm just gonna try to get this IOLI core to add. Okay, there we go. So sometimes with the core gen stuff, you, if it doesn't run, it doesn't really doesn't like that. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for trigger ports. Uh, everything else is the same. And we could just go along and say, how many bits is each port? So this is the same as when I was using the auto instantiation. I'm gonna go 99242, generate, and that'll take a while. In the meantime, um, we'll add these chip scope control wires. So. Those are the two control wires, and then control zero connects to control zero. Control one to control one. I'm just going to switch the preferred language here to Verilog so that it uh, shows us instantiation templates we want. So, actually, I called this coordinate icon instead of chip scope icon, but let's change that. All right, so I'm also going to have a integrated um, logic analyzer once this uh, coordinate ILA completes. So I'm going to add this right now. 
And the integrated logic analyzer, it um, it's fairly basic, so it'll give you it'll ask for a control input. So this is the uh, chip scope control, so CS control zero. Um, it'll ask for clock. In this case, this clock 100 megahertz. It'll ask for each of the trigger ports. So trig zero, trig one, trig two and trig three. Um, so trigger two is easy, this one's counter, so what are the other ones gonna be? Well, trigger three, I said I wanted to use the, the physical data line, RXD and TXD, so I'll concatenate them like that. Um, for trig zero and trig one, I'll show you, for example, you can just make new signals if you want. So in this case, I'm going to have a nine bit signal. It's called RX debug, same thing here. TX debug, and I'm just going to split them up manually. So, for example, RX debug, the lower 8 bits are the data, and the higher bit is the ready. I'll do the same thing with the TX debug. Oops, and there's no gap here. TX data, and then I'll just see, I called it TX start. And then this one connects to RX debug, this one to TX debug. Oops. All right, easy enough. Um, so you can see now the ILA cores added. Uh, and because I switched from Verilog to VHDL, the installation template isn't there, but you can get the idea. It'll give you the same information. Finally, I'm going to add a virtual I.O. So I'll just keep the naming the same here, this Corgen VIO. So virtual I.O. lets me control some output ports. Um, in this case, I'm going to use it to actually send data I want with the, the physical UART core instead of needing to um, needing to do the loopback. So all I'm gonna use is the synchronous output port, so synchronous to the clock, and it's gonna be nine bits. So you just get one synchronous port and you just decide, you split it up yourself. So eight bits for data, one bits for um, ready, and you just hit generate there. Uh, so what, I'm also gonna modify the code a little bit. So the TX data and TX start will no longer be uh, got from the input, but will be controlled by this virtual IO core. So it's gonna be called VIO. And I know that it's again gonna ask for the control. So I used the control zero before, so I'll use control one here. Um, it's gonna ask for a clock. So this 100 megahertz system clock, and it's gonna ask for a port called sync out. Uh, so sync out is just the synchronization, the synchronous output data. So I'll have TX start and TX data. Oops. So that's done. And you can see, for example, the installation template here. So now it's properly giving me a very log one. So we have the control, we have clock, and we have sync out. Um, so normally you'd just use these templates and you know copy and paste it right here, and then copy and paste all of the uh, signal names you want in, which makes it a lot easier. So I'm just using a uh, concatenated signal names. And oops, what happened there? There we go. Um, so that should be everything. And again, we will... Well, so it's got to regenerate a bunch of stuff. But uh, this gives you the idea. So you can download the completed project as well if you want. And in part two of the video, I'll show you, assuming you have this, how you can actually get do all the debug work. So this will show you using the windowing, um, using storage qualification and whatnot.